Hey, how's it going, everybody? Ramon here, back at you with a new episode of Meet the Surfer, episode 34. We made our way over to the east side, to Laihe, to uh, speak with Liam, aka Low Dog. So uh, today, Liam, uh, he's got some really, really cool stuff going on, and that's mainly why I wanted to sit with him and uh, talk story before he gets too big. So uh, yeah, Liam, go ahead, um, tell us your story. The floor is yours. Aloha, my name is Leo Molson. I'm from Laie, Oahu, and this is my life right here. So how I started off was me and my dad would go to Hukilau in the mornings or after school, and he would go kite surf. He's really good at kite surfing, or he would go paddle boarding or surfing. And I was kind of scared. I would just sit on the beach with the boogie board, but as time went on, I grew close to the ocean and I was able to start bodyboarding. And ever since then, I'll just kind of stand up, figure it out. And I'm like, oh, maybe I could stand up on a surfboard. So I took my dad's old surfboard and I would take it out while he'd go kite surfing. And ever since then, I kind of just progressed and taught myself how to surf. And I would take my phone and leave it on the beach and I would actually record myself. I would press record, I will go run out and then I will try to get myself in the frame of the phone and see how I was surfing and how I can improve because I had no one to film me. I was just had my mom's phone, I didn't have a phone. So I will take the phone, film myself, come in every 20 minutes because the camera would stop rolling and I would just go home and be like, oh, how good was this wave? How good did I surf? So. I just it just grew off from there and yeah so growing up here I didn't have a lot of people to look up to as a surfer it was there was only a couple of uncles that would surf around here and I kind of had to grow my own path as a surfer knowing that I was going to be different from everyone else in the community and growing up I didn't have a lot of friends because it was hard to uh, bring them to the beach you know and my relationships kind of just cut off so i was like okay it's gonna be myself my family me and my dad so we just went head on with it and i grew as a person you know being different and um not choosing the football path and i just want to be an inspiration to fellow polynesians out there who are coming up as athletes no matter what sport you're in just uh, listen, listen to your heart, you know? It's not your parents' decision, it's yours. And yeah, and my dad and my parents understood what my dream was, and now we're here just chasing the dream. Awesome, so yeah. uh, let's talk about more recently, within the past uh, few years, what's been happening and uh, you know, how you got into uh, being able to represent your uh, father's home country. It's been amazing representing American Samoa, um, the heritage of my dad and so on and ancestry is so big in our family. Um, being able to represent in the ISA World Serving Games is crazy. It's a big stage. It's probably the, one of the biggest stages I've ever surfed on and it's crazy to come from this small town and go to the big world out there. You know, you get to travel around the world, been to many places been to Japan, El Salvador, California, all over the world. And growing the team together started as my dad and I, and we had a vision to make American Samoa a surfing team and to have more Samoans out there in the water to be more comfortable because Back in American Samoa, there's not a lot of kids that swim out there. No one knows how to learn how to swim, so everyone's scared of the water. So being the first ones to do it is gonna be a big inspiration for sure. And I hope there's more kids out there we can bring on. And, and every year we've been following and trying to find more people. And this year, fortunately, we were able to bring on three new people. Um, we brought on the Gerards, so there's Jonah Gerard, Sive, and Lucy, and we were able to bring them to Huntington Beach, and we were able to compete there for the 2024 Olympics, and we placed 29th out of 100 teams at the World Surfing Games in Huntington Beach, 
and now they're taking the top 30 teams to El Salvador in 2023 to compete for the 2024 Olympics in Paris. So that is their goal right now to become Olympians and to be the first of American Samoa and Samoa. Yeah. Awesome. So I know you guys will do it, especially with the hard work. And um, like you said, uh, training really hard. I know you got uh, Raphael Croft in your back seat. So Raphael is going to get you uh, nice. And make <laughs> oh, sure yeah. you're in shape for the games. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so next, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, give a shout out to uh, some of your sponsors and people who have helped you get where you are today. So I would like to first thank my heavenly father. Without him, I wouldn't be here and wouldn't have the path to follow, you know. And I'd like to thank my parents, my mom and dad, my family. And I'd like to thank my sponsors, Socorro Surfboards. Got the best surfboards around. And I'm super grateful for Uncle Wade always trusting me and I'm able to have that trust in him. And we're going to do some big stuff. And I'm thankful for my other sponsors, Tanoa, the best clothing line. And my sponsor, Route 99, the best hats. They help support our American Samoa team, um, giving us hats and apparel. And we'll also like to thank Rafael. He's a big, made a big change in my life and I'm just super grateful for him. And we're gonna take it to the next level for sure. And I'd like to thank my last sponsor, Seven Brothers. They've helped me financially and always been in my corner since my first job, my first shift there as a cook flipping burgers. So. Now we're here on the big stage and we're gonna make it and thankful for you guys. First off, this is the board that started it all right here. The Magic 6.0, too big of a board for me. <laughs> so this is the board that started it all. This is a um, yeah, 6.0 Mitsu design, Mitsu surfboard design. And yeah, I used this since I was little. I didn't start surfing until I was 11, so this is what started off right here. My dad's old kiteboard, no straps. This was just plain old board in the garage, and every time I had any sticker, I would just slap it on, a random sticker, it would be an Apple sticker, anything. So, yeah, this board means a lot to me. This is everything to me right here. I'm always going to keep this forever. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that board will be uh, hanging up on a wall. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. You never know that board, that, that board might end up in Samoa. Oh, you never yeah, know. Yeah. Might have to give it to Behind a kid Behind a case day. or something. Yeah, you yeah. might have to donate it. Yeah. So, yeah. This will be someone else's board for sure. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, so, right here, this is my first international win that I won on right here. It's an RS surfboard, 510. And I won in Samoa, Savai Samoa. I was repre representing American Samoa, and it was a really special win for me. And that was my first big win, so I'm stoked. And here we are. We have my one of my favorite shortboards right here. It's a K3, it's a coral surfboards. It's a 60, and I usually ride this every single day, all day. It's my favorite. It's playing around board and over here we have my small wave board this is what i use in huntington or small waves over here when the waves aren't too good it's a swallowtail 511 socorro and I'm not sure what model it is i think it is a five plus and it's one of the one of the most high performance models he has and i'm really stoked to have it and here is one of these two actually one of my favorite boards and these two were handed to me from uncle wade and they're actually gabriel medina's boards he didn't pick them up during covid so they were sitting in his shop and i'm able to take it and use them and this one right here is a 610 i use this at sunset pipe whenever it's about Six to eight, double overhead, really good board. And right here, it's a pretty special board. This one is a, let me see, it's a 7-0 right here. This one has 
artwork that my friend Ellie James did. She has, these are my friends right here, all over, my mom, and yeah, my girlfriend right here. It's a really special board, and I can't wait to use this this winter. And the last two boards right here, these ones, my normal short board also, I use a lot, 6.0, and this one is a K3 as well, it's a coral. And the last one right here, this is what I used in Huntington Beach, California. And this was pretty special to me because I was able to beat an Olympian on this board in the last contest at the ISA. And yeah, just gave me a good buzzer beater win and it's pretty special. And this is a 511 and it's a, also a five plus. And yeah, I'm probably gonna keep this board forever. And it's a really good board. And I'm thankful for all these surfboards from Uncle Wade to Coral. Yeah.